I do I do have somewhat of an idea. I don't know if I have anything you know major, but my basic idea is um, building on our levels of strength. Previously, we worked within the left and right paradigm, and we would br- build this base, and then all of a sudden one of our legs would disappear. You know, like the Republican Party, boom, steel tariffs. Ugh, you know what I mean? Uh, medical, uh, what is it? Medicare Part B. Uh, there's our other leg. So, plant. What is it? Plan D, okay. D is dog. So basically, um, building on our levels of support, working outside of the left and right paradigm, I found that if we we find all of those groups that literally, really will fight for freedom, you know the ones that were demonized before that I used to think were, were horrible, like for instance, um, let's just take, I'll take a group that's kind of radical and they're maybe considered conspiratorial. We are Change LA, okay? They're a group, they're a local group, but if you actually look at what they want, they want to take out the Federal Reserve. They want to take out the income tax. They want to stick to the Constitution. Maybe, maybe they believe in some things that I wouldn't believe in or that somebody else wouldn't believe in that might be considered conspiratorial. But they're not going to sell me out when it comes time um, to write legislation. So I'm for, I'm for uniting groups that are outside of the left and right paradigm and for stopping to coordinate Starting to coordinate our advocacy along the lines of something that benefits the um, the incumbents. Right now, we all coordinate all of our all of our messages. The entire time I had the Tea Party, I was getting all these calls from people, and they were saying, "Okay, we need to tailor our message so that way the media will respond." But basically, tailoring that message made it easier for the incumbents to combat us to say, "Oh, I'm with you. Oh, those three issues, I'm with you." But they weren't with us on the other ten issues. So all of these separate groups need to line up. They all need to start attacking their congressman. If one of them is, uh, the congressman says, I'm going to go with you, that's fine. All the people from that group can start attacking the congressman from the umbrella of all the other groups. Because maybe they're going to, like, for instance, my congressman, Congressman Brad Sherman, he supports H.R. 1207. So now am I supposed to kiss his butt and vote for him while he raises my taxes? No, I'm going to join up with all the other groups that want to attack him in every other way. I'm going to make sure he supports H.R. 1207, and we're going to try to take him down on every other method. So as, as far as um, sending out, I, I got your card, as far as sending out emails to all my people, as far as just sending out um, information to all the other groups that are not part of the left and right paradigm, it's literally just um, the Libertarian Party, the third parties are finally, they're finally coming around. It's a paradigm. It's a it's a pendulum, and you know, it's it's hard sometimes for us to win, but like Ron Paul said, having the effect, having a change the debate, making yourself popular for the next time, getting people excited, getting people to stop voting, just the fact that they don't vote for the left and the right is so important. And um, I mean, I just hopefully that added something to it, but just getting you more and more votes, whether you win or not, I think is important, and getting your message out there. So. Nathan, what do you think about third-party uh, uh, angles? I mean, I know this is a decentralized movement that's kind of nonpartisan. This is just about the ideas, but third-party uh, strategy. So, so the trouble I have with third parties is Ross Perot. Uh, Ross Perot gave us Bill Clinton. Of course, George H. W. Bush was much better, but uh, you know, at the at the same time, you know, we almost ended up with socialized health care there. So glad we dodged that that bullet. Although what we have now is much better, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I I've kind of uh, resigned to working within the. Uh, you know, this isn't going to blow over well in this room, but I've kind of resigned well to working with trying to work within the Republican Party to at least uh, deter the more fraudulent of the candidates uh, from getting up there. Yeah. Uh, Chris will take votes from any party. Let it be. On I, the I mean, the, the trouble is, is that y- y- there's a huge band gap that needs to be overcome in terms of organizational energy uh, before a credible third party can come together. And uh, it re- most third parties in this country historically have centered around personalities. Uh, you know, George Wallace, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Ross Perot, uh, and. Ralph Nader, right? And so uh, that's kind of the, the problem that I see with third parties in this country. Now, 
if they could get, you know, for example, I think if Glenn Beck decided that he was going to defect from the Republican Party and take Rush Limbaugh with him, because I think Rush Limbaugh has officially washed his hands of Michael Steele and most of the party at this point, uh, then, uh, you know, you might have a chance. You know, I think so maybe that's the key is to find a few personalities that are willing to kind of take it with them. You know, uh, but that's, that's going to be the hard part, problem, and I think, unfortunately, uh, we're in a really tough situation in this country. Because, uh, you know, I mean, you look at, you look at something like the, uh, the, the salary uh, freezes that they tried to pass through on the major banks. Um, half of the Republicans voted with it. It's like uh, Eric Cantor, who I thought was a pretty good guy, voted for the bill because he was you know, scared to death that the people in his district might lynch him for you know, glorifying the, uh, the banks. Uh, which is categorically absurd. So, it, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do. And uh, it kind of scares me. I mean, you know, there I am. There I am on November 15th of last year, sitting there at the numismatic exchange, buying you know, gold coins and a bag of junk silver because I'm not sure if my money is going to be worth anything in four years. Uh, and if that's the case, I don't want to be stuck in the Zimbabwe. I don't want to be stuck in the Zimbabwe scenario of having to bring a backpack to buy a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, "My God, have I lost my mind, or has the world lost its mind?" Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at at that. I know that's kind of open ended, but uh, something's got to give here, and and hopefully the events in the next couple of years will be so disturbing and so so riddled with unintended consequences from what our political establishment has, has tried to engineer that people will finally start to wake up and realize that uh, the government trying to micromanage the economy is just lunacy. And then maybe then we'll get some real change. I just wanted to quickly add, though, it is prime time for libertarians to get people because I can go up to um, gay people, um, minorities, and I say, hey, have you guys heard of Ron Paul? Have you heard of libertarians? Go up to them and try to say, have you heard of George Bush? And see what they try to throw at you. You know what I mean? So it's prime time to advocate the message. We have the message of truth. And like I said, they ignored us. They laughed at us. Now they're going to start fighting us, and then we're going to win because there's movements like the free, the free men movement that are coming up where we're not going to follow statutes and acts. We're only going to follow laws, and we're only going to conduct ourselves with lawful activity. And it's a growing movement. So look out for stuff like that because things are going to churn. We have the Constitution. We have the tools. This is the one country where we do have the tools. They haven't taken our guns yet. Remember, in 1775, um, after they had lost a lot of their rights, they retained their firearms, and we don't need to remind everybody what happened then. So this is uh, we still have the tools, so... Don't be afraid yet. Outstanding. All right, we're already way over time, but, uh, you know, I want to wrap it up on that, and I want to thank our Tea Party organizers, Ron Cabrera, Nathan Mintz, our web activist and uh, blog, blog web Zena <laughs> extraordinaire, Sarah Michelle it's really Spinoza. Right, save it. <laughs> thank you very it wasn't much. For you guys Give them all a hand. job. <laughs>